God the Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Life can be very disappointing, and we all know this. Matter of fact, we set up situations where disappointments are common. Take, for example, the running of the Kentucky Derby yesterday. There were 19 horses in the field. 19 horses, but only one winner. That means that there were 18 losers. There were 18 jockeys and 18 owners who were very disappointed. There were also millions of people who placed bets on those 18 horses that likewise are disappointed. Some were disappointed than others. Some just bet a little bit of poppy change. Others bet a huge amount and are so disappointed that all the funny hats and all the mint juleps cannot curb their pain. A story about the two disciples that we just heard is a story about disappointments. It's a story about two people who were following Jesus, who thought that he was the Messiah, the one that they had hoped for, and yet they were disappointed when they saw him arrested and crucified on the cross. They were disappointed and they were fearful, and were for good reason. Because if you followed a Messiah like that, who turned out not to be the one who changed the world, but the one who died, that put you in jeopardy. It would be like today, being in eastern Ukraine, or being in Syria, or being in Egypt, or any place that is undergoing a civil war, and following the losing leader of that your life, your safety would be in jeopardy. And so not only were the hopes of these people dashed, but they were very afraid and had good reason to be afraid. And yet, there in their disappointments, Jesus joins them. Jesus comes to them and joins them along the road. They ask him a question. He asked a question, what are they talking about? And it's not just simple, in the Greek, it's not just simple discussion, like you were talking about the weather. But rather is that these people, these two disciples, they were examining all the details of everything that had taken place, everything that was done. And so they were going over all of these details. And finally they tell him what had taken place. And then they say, we had hoped that he would have been the Messiah. And then Jesus explains to them that all these things were part of God's plan. That God was in these details working out something that they could not even imagine. That's the way we often know as people speak about hope, especially when we have disappointments. We had hoped that this would have happened. We had hoped that the outcome of the surgery would have been different. We had hoped that the job still would have been there in the future. We had hoped that the letter of acceptance would have come from the college that we would apply to. We had hoped, and you can fill in the blank. We can hope that the relationship would have been healed between two people. We speak about this all the time, and it's very important for us as Christians not to just come in on Christmas or on, on Easter and say Christ is risen and, and he is risen indeed and make that proclamation. But it's very important for us that we understand that there's a lot in this world that has not been fixed that still disappoints us. That brokenness still seems to have the upper hand. Yet, in the disappointments and the brokenness, we have to remember that Jesus is still there. And that God has given us a hope that we need to proclaim in the world. Not just simply in our words, but also in our actions. A couple ways of St. John's have done this in the past uh, uh, recent history. This 
past weekend, the youth of the church were here for a 30 hour famine. They put on a skit at the 6.30 service, they'll put on another uh, skit uh, hopefully next week at the 10.15 service. And this was a 30 hour famine. That's a big deal to go 30 hours without food. 30 hours. And not only that, but during this time, they collected food for the home of the, for, for the food pantry. They also collected, they also went out and gave kids uh, to the homeless containing some things to eat and also uh, personal items like soaps and shampoos. And in that sense, they were, they were proclaiming hope in action, in what they were doing. In your bulletin this week, we have this program from the Synod called Faith Works, and it's a campaign to support the ministries of, for example, Bethesda Children Hope, Lutheran Service Society, Lutheran Lynn, Lutheran Campus Ministry, Gettysburg Seminary, Blaine Run, Lutheran Senior Life, Teal College. We do this working with our brothers and sisters in Christ in the same area. It's very, it, uh, it is very ironic that this is a Sunday that they decided to launch this campaign. Because Synod, actually, is something that is featured in our Gospel lesson. <coughs> synod comes from two Greek words combined together. Soon hodos. Soon hodos means to be on the road together. Soon meaning together. Hodos being the road or the pathway. So, in this sense, in a very visible way, we are on the road together with our brothers and sisters in Christ in this area. Together we proclaim Christ in ways in which we take action. We Not just simply in what we do, but also uh, what we say, but also in what we do. I think we're taking action in terms of offering a, a campfire service in the midweek during the summertime. That's the way we're taking a risk. We're taking a risk and saying, listen, the gospel is worth us taking a risk. Let's make no mistake about it. Despair and lack of hope does not just simply exist in third world countries or where there is poverty and war. But despair and lack of hope can also dwell, as it's been suggested, in the highest penthouses in downtown Manhattan. Their despair can also reside as well. Everyone needs hope in this life. Let us confess in action the hope that we have in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has demonstrated to us that He has the power to overcome all disappointment.